Well, hello. Hi. Um, thanks for uh, agreeing to be part of Death and Glory and, and sharing some of your experience and insight. Would you like to just briefly say who you are and anything interesting you might want to share about yourself? So we both. I'm Richard Holt. I'm a solicitor. I've been qualified for about 30 years working with Evans Dairy. Today is my last day after 30 years. So, right. uh, but yeah, uh, working in trusts, probate, you know, rules of probate. In the early part of my career, I was doing some litigation. But, uh, rules of probate has been causing us a lot of uh, hard work over the last few years, really, I okay. think. <laughs> and uh, I'm Aisha, and uh, I've been qualified one year, but I've been working in the area for about seven years. Right. And um, I do this area, so rules, probate, powers of attorney. That's good. Documents. documents. And so is it? Is it as exciting and interesting as the TV would give us, like all these hunting down heirs and running, you know, down tunnels where you've got to sort some problem? More, more exciting. I think it's more exciting. More exciting. Absolutely. 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 Well, we're going to see a short edited film because on, on the night you're, you're here, because this is in the past, this takes place. Um, you, you've done a presentation, so we're going to show some of that now. Yeah. And then we'll come back briefly at the end and um, you can summarise it. Yeah. Here we go. So I'm here to talk to you about half boring things, um, just so you're aware of what's out there in terms of services, um, what those type of documents allow you to do, just so it's something you think about, something you are aware you can get involved with, uh, put in place, and how it can make your life easier. So with Wills, um, when we meet clients, no two clients are the same. So each person, each client for us, they come with their own story. And it's really enjoyable for me when I have a client come and sit in front of me and say, don't worry, this is going to be straightforward. Mm -hmm. One hour later, we're still there <laughs> talking about things. And that's what I love about it, because we make the clients think about situations which they may not have thought of. We raise scenarios which they may not have realised could occur. And we always suggest they think of backups. Like, okay, if this couldn't happen, or if something happens and this person can't inherit, what would be your backup choice? So it's always very interesting talking to clients. And you'd appreciate those that you that have done wills. It's a very personal conversation that you have. You are sharing a lot of your personal details, whether it be about family, whether it be about finances. And we obviously take that very seriously um, and we try and give you the best advice we can given that situation. But the advice always is, if in future, whether it be one day later, one month later, one year later, if your circumstances are changing, whether that be personal circumstances or financial, it's always worth reviewing your will. Because you may want to do things differently, or the law may have changed, and you may take a different view on how you've done your will and where you want your assets to go. So <clears throat> there are different types of wills. You've got the more straightforward ones. Then you do get the more complex ones. Again, when you have that conversation uh, with a solicitor, they will be able to tell you and advise you what type of will may be more appropriate for your circumstances. Um, and in that, we do, like I say, discuss family situations and uh, financial situations. So with family situations, at the end of the day, you are the person who owns your assets. You choose what you do with it. But the law allows certain categories of people to contest the will. So there's always this debate on, do you really have free choice and free will as to where do you leave your assets and who do you leave your assets to? Well, yes and no. So to an extent, yes, you can choose whoever you want to leave your assets to, but the law does protect certain categories of uh, individuals, such as spouses, children, and those that are financially dependent on the person that's passed away. Um, and the law protects them and allows them to make a claim if they feel they've not been reasonably provided for financially in a person's will. But again, these are all things that happen after a person passes away and there's only so much you can do to prepare for that. Um, and a lot of the time what we advise is, it's a good idea, just on a separate piece of paper, jot down your reasons why you've done what you've done. You know, if someone possibly doesn't want to include a child or wants to favour one child over another, you know, everyone has their reasons and there's nothing wrong about that. Our job is to advise, okay, that's fine, but what could happen after you pass away? And they can, like I said, jot down their 
reasons. And then if that ever needs to be used later, whether it be in court, then it just sheds some light on the situation and helps people understand why the person did what they did, uh, rather than the judge just deciding, okay, that's fine, you made a claim, let's give you something. So like I said, each case is different and it's worth having that in-depth conversation because there may be a few things there which you've not previously thought are important or need probing into further, um, but actually could do with giving a bit more attention to. So uh, like Richard touched upon, um, if you don't do a will, in some circumstances, it may not make the biggest difference, um, but in many circumstances, it might. And with the kind of family dynamics we are in these days, um, you know, there might be stepchildren involved, multiple previous marriages, um, there are estranged children, so there's, like I said, a lot of circumstances which go on. Um, so by not having a will, something called the intestacy rules, which are government laid down rules, and they set out who should benefit from your estate. And it finds the next of kin, but that could mean a biological child who you've not had anything to do with for over 50 years. You know, this person now is equally entitled to your estate as that child that you've lived with your whole life. So it's always a good idea uh, to do a will because, like I said, you keep control to an extent as to what happens. Um, and the main thing is, is that you can also choose the people that will be in charge to deal with your affairs. Okay? So they are called executors and they are the ones that will make sure that the wishes of your will are followed through with and they are the ones that make the decisions and make sure everything flows fairly smoothly after someone passes away. Well, that was good. Um, so, can you summarise? Do you think what what would you what would in in a, say two sentences? You can have one each. Um, can you summarise what advice would you give to people in terms of the legalities around death and dying? What would you say? I think with death, it's a sad reality, and the biggest advice I can give is be as prepared for it as you can, and that's what doing wills allows you to do: is be prepared, put your affairs in order. Um, and like I said, it is a sad reality and it's a difficult time for families to go through. So to make it as easy as you can for them, be prepared, put a will in place and I hope for the best. That's good, yeah, wise words, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. I think the law is just very complicated. You know, there are lots of laws that we won't know about necessarily, intestacy where you haven't got a will, where your property might be directed in a particular way that you wouldn't necessarily want it to be directed to a, a person, a child, a relative who, who, who might benefit who you wouldn't necessarily want. So the will gives you certainty mm. in terms of directing where you want your estate to go or benefiting charities, of course, which is very helpful for many good causes to do mm. that and to show your appreciation for that, that particular charity you pass on. Or perhaps benefiting ministers you may have met during your life. I have said I have said the other check. I have said the other <laughs> check to, 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 to churches and the, the church wardens are very happy to receive it. I, I we occasionally and I always feel slightly uncomfortable myself. I'm not it's saying don't, to you. I'm not saying don't give us money. I've never personally received anything. I'm not sure um, it's always an awkward one that isn't it? But I guess inheriting is an awkward situation you find yourself in, isn't it? Because in a sense it's, it's a good thing to happen, get money, but it's the, it's the result of something that actually is quite painful and difficult, isn't it? So it's, I guess, a lot of life's like that mixed. Working in this field, I guess you, although it's not directly involved with, with the person, but with families, I mean, has that affected how you view death as a, as a thing? You know, how, how you view your own mortality? I mean, this is quite deep, isn't it? Mm. This, this time. Um, has it, has it, yeah, what, what's it done in terms of how you think or feel about death and, and that kind of stuff? Honestly, when I started to work in this area, the first thing I did was go home and sort all my paperwork out. Mm -hmm. Because right. you do start to think <laughs> that if tomorrow was your, well, if today was your last day, how is anyone meant to know what do you have, where are they meant to start? So yeah. honestly, it's organised my life. And I think the main thing is be prepared. For me, um, like I said, it is a reality. And hopefully it's the start of 
the next adventure. Um, but being prepared for it in this lifetime and like I said, making it as easy as you can for your loved ones that you're leaving behind. That I think is the advice and that's how I have been um, influenced by this area of work is I've seen how I've had to deal with other people's estates and I've sat there thinking, how could this have been easier? Yes. Um, and mostly it's be more organised um, and it's always, that's the key. Be organised mm -hmm. and put your affairs in order. Do a will, make it easier. Yeah, do a put it in a drawer, forget it. Absolutely. And and things, until you need to review it and then yeah. get it back out. Oh, yes, that's one thing yes. I learned tonight. Keep yes. reviewing it. Review your yeah. will. <laughs> Because I, I think people don't like talking, it is a taboo subject, isn't it? And mm. it, even in families, people don't like bringing it up with their relatives, which is quite helpful sometimes to have other. So talking to a solicitor about it, you don't, if, if the family find it awkward, it's it's someone who's neutral and out of the well, picture, isn't it? There's a lot of pressure in families sometimes, undue influence, you mm. know, where people you know, can be trying to persuade people in certain ways. And that's a phenomenon that, that, that is, often seen. Yeah. I think going to see a professional enables that at a time of emotional vulnerability to be able to see the client on their own and say, is this what you want? Yeah. You know, because we exclude everyone else from the room. It's a conversation just with us on our own. Yeah. Um, professional rules of conduct are such that you've got to know what your client wants, not what the kids want. Yeah. You know? Uh, and I think that's very important. I think in terms of my analysis of death, um, you you it is a privilege to see clients, you know, mm. when they are terminally ill, um, and you're invited into their home to, to to write their last will. You really do feel as though you're you're part of someone's life at a very difficult time, um, and it is an inevitable part of living, isn't it? That we're all going to die, and I, and I think it's one thing, as they say, there's only one thing you can be sure, two things you can be sure of: death and taxes. And that, that seems to be the case, doesn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. It's been it's been really interesting and helpful, which is uh, a bonus. Pleasure. Really. So, thank um, you. and uh, yeah, and good luck in your next your next chapter. Yeah, thank you very much. And and well, hopefully we'll might see. Hopefully, see you yeah, again. See you around yes. yeah, yeah. in different different guises. Well, I need to come and see you anyway. So. <laughs> Do so, a will. That's something else. <laughs> Do a will and yeah. a power of attorney. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Goodbye. Okay.